So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take Brent's flap here, and I'm going to save it because he brought it up here to the ethmoid region, and in a moment I will take it back and put it over the cella just to kind of demonstrate where how it can be helpful there. Um, so I'm going to, for the moment, I'm going to tuck it into the nasopharynx here. You can also, if you have a nice maxillary entrostomy, it fits nicely into the maxillary entrostomy as well. Um, so I agree with Greg. I think that um, your standard uh, pituitary or transphenoidal approach is something that um, we're seeing a lot more frequently at um, just about everywhere, um, endoscopically, um, in the community, certainly. Um, and there are a handful of different ways to do this. Um, so some people like to remove turbinates in order to um, approach the, the cella. I personally think that um, it depends on the case. If, there, if the patient has a very large middle turbinate, um, especially on the right side, um, I will sometimes sort of truncate that middle turbinate and take it um, from right about here anteriorly down. Um, if they're acromegalic, oftentimes they'll have very large turbinates, very beefy turbinates that tend to want to bleed. So those are our patients that I will uh, oftentimes kind of truncate the middle turbinate. If they have a big concha bullosa on that right side, um, I found that it's a little bit easier to just go ahead and, and take that, that turbinate on the right. Some people will, will um, take the superior turbinates. Um, I think Ray was telling me earlier that, that he's, he take, tends to take the superior turbinates. One of my partners does that as well. I will um, oftentimes lateralize the superior turbinates, um, and you can get really good lateralization of the superior turbinates. So in this particular specimen, um, obviously it's gone through quite a bit of dissection already. Um, but typically my approach is to go on, to start on the side that has the largest sphenoid, um, and that's usually because I'm teaching residents um, how to how to operate. Um, so we generally start on this, the side with the larger sphenoid. I am going to go ahead and and truncate this turbinate because it's it's floppy, and so we're going to kind of get it out of the way. So in removing um, turbinates especially the middle turbinate, you want to keep in mind that the skull base slopes. Um, so it's kind of a snip and push inferiorly sort of motion. One thing that you can do in this more posterior aspect um, is you can actually, you, if you're coming in, you can come in kind of along the nasal floor, use your debrider here in this area, cauterize that vascular pedicle, um, and then take out the rest of the turbinate. You do want to cauterize the vascular pedicle just like in, uh, when you're doing a medial maxillectomy and you remove that inferior turbinate. So using our image guidance, I don't know if you guys can see, we've already had a nice um, sphenoidotomy here. So we have a nice... Jason, can we go to the navigation view? We have a nice um, large sphenoid on the right side and then looking on the other side. So my typical approach is to go ahead and open the sphenoids on either side. And that's already been done um, from our prior FEST dissection. So, and then it doesn't really matter um, which side you come from, um, but basically I will take a caudal elevator and a couple of centimeters in front of the sphenoid face, um, 
approximately at the um, leading edge of the middle turbinate or, or just a little bit behind it, make a through and through septectomy incision. In the live patient, um, I'll typically have a, a cottonoid on the opposite side so that as you're incising through the septum, what you're going to end up seeing is that cottonoid, and that will tell you when to stop. And that sounds, when I originally heard that, I thought that sounds kind of ridiculous. Why wouldn't, you know, you're just going through the septum. Um, but sometimes it'll bleed, and sometimes, and you have the layer of mucosa, and then bone, and then mucosa on the other side. And so having that patty sitting in this phenoethmoid recess on the opposite side can be very helpful. Then I'll take a, typically start with a through cut, just kind of make a window. Where I can kind of see. You can do this obviously with a through cut. Um, you can take the mucosa down with, with your debrider. You have a debrider? No. You want an angle Straight. So um, we want to kind of make this generous posterior septectomy. When you start to get back more posteriorly, the bone definitely gets harder. And we can clean up this, the mucosa here. Now, if you if you're, have not harvested a septal flap uh, at the beginning, and I, I am, we are not an, an institution that harvests septal flaps um, routinely in all of our cases, I will save the, the vascular pedicles by pushing the mucosa down on the inferior aspect of the sphenoid face. So we can see the mucosa here. As we're coming more posteriorly, what I'll, what I'll do is to lift the mucosa up that's sitting between the posterior septum and the sphenoidotomy. Take a straight through cut. You want to incise that. Freer. Freer. Or, or caudal. That's fine. And then you, then you can save your pedicle, your vascular pedicle, to your posterior septal artery by pushing this mucosa inferiorly. And you can harvest your a flap later on in your dissection if you feel like you need a flap to close a significant leak. So I would, I would say that the vast majority of standard TSA cella leaks can be closed easily with um, just a free mucosal graft. And that's my typical procedure. Um, can I have a, a burr on the debrider? But if you're if if you have a, a giant adenoma, um, oftentimes craniopharyngiomas, et cetera, and you end up in the in a ventricle or a high flow leak, um, the vascularized flaps are very helpful. At this point, I'll usually switch to some sort of powered instrumentation, um, a burr, or uh, we oftentimes use actually the sonopet um, in this for this particular portion. 
And we basically just want to connect all the holes. So we'll take this septum down significantly. Go ahead and remove. So we're, we want to connect the, the snake eyes, as I like to say, of the two sphenoidotomies. Bring this way down to the floor. Neurosurgeons, in, at least in my um, institution, our neurosurgeons love a big approach. So I try to give them as much room as we possibly can. come to the other side over here. And then we'll basically just continue to work and take the inner sinus septum. So we're going to keep working here. We can start to kind of appreciate our, our clival recess back there. And we're basically just going to continue to take this down here. Sure. So we'll basically take this um, inner sinus septum down, which I'll be happy to do um, while you guys are dissecting, and you can certainly come and see the end result. And um, Ray will start on the uh, Lothrop, and we'll both kind of show you the finished product at the end. <laughs> 